Hi, and welcome to Math with Mr. Douglas. Today, we tackle the greatest common factor. Yes, are you ready? Here we go. So we're talking about factors today, and factors are really, really cool. And I love this lesson. And you might have heard about factors before, and of course it's, it's arch enemy, multiples. And we'll look at multiples in a, in a future video. But I think we need to get uh, a friend out here and that kind of stuff. And <clears throat> uh, of course, there has been some requests for some new math animals. And who am I to say no to requests? Actually, you know what? We're, never, we're not going to do that. So I think we need to get out um, our kitty cat. There's been some cat requests. Um, as some of you may or may not know, is that I am not a huge fan of cats. I really don't see the point of their existence, um, which I understand. Some people are uh, cat people, and that's okay. I, I still think they're nice people. But um, let's be honest. If you're going to choose an animal, you're going to choose a dog. Because um, dogs are awesome. Dogs are awesome. But um, saying that, though, I understand that people want a, uh, a kitty cat. And kitty cats um, can be cute because they have little pink noses. Right, little pink noses, and, and they're always smiling, that little evil, kind of mysterious smile. And, and we'll give this kind of kitty cat maybe a little bit of an edge here. It's kind of like a half, kind of shaded in kind of cat here. There we go, little edgy, little edgy cat, um, as, as cats are, are known to be. With a little bit of pause, and we'll give her a little whoop. There we go, and there we go. Maybe, maybe the cat's running a little bit. And then the little paw. There's a little paws. You know, cats do seem like they are. That's a really big paw, isn't it? That's a little bit too big. And you're wondering, so we're gonna talk about factors. And um, factors, uh, they kind of go with a lot of the other uh, kind of ideas about knowing your number systems. And we're gonna talk a little bit about um, that after I finish this uh, little there we go, get her a little, uh, there we go. So the cat's gonna help us out a little bit uh, today. And um, first off, we need to know some, dif some different things. So we need to know about our natural numbers. And another way to think of natural numbers are our counting numbers. So counting numbers. So you think about if I asked you to start counting, you'd go one, two, three. You wouldn't start at zero, would you? And you wouldn't use fractions or decimals. So those are counting numbers. Those are called natural numbers. And those are pretty important because when we're talking about factors, we're talking about numbers that can divide evenly. So, so we're talking about natural numbers. So natural numbers that divide evenly into a number. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be kind of talking about and talking about listing those factors. Now there's a lot of different ways to go and uh, learn about factors, so goodbye, there we go. So let's take a look at the factors of, let's say uh, 28 is a good one, so 28. So let's think of all the numbers that can divide evenly into 28. Um, of course, one always starts out, and we got two, we have four, uh, what else do we have? We have um, seven, 14, and of course, 28. Now, the cool thing is that these all make pairs. So they make pairs together. So if you see 1 times 28 gives you 28, 2 times 14 gives you 28, and of course 4 times 7 gives you 28. So factors make up pairs. And that becomes really important as we kind of move into, um, we start thinking about multiples a little bit, but just kind of keep that in mind, that we're making up different kinds of pairs. And now we have to go and find out how we actually find out what um, the factors are like how do we go and do that? Well before we get that we have to know another term and that's going to be called prime Prime factors and we need to focus on that word prime So prime Not optimus prime for all you transformer fans out there, but prime just means numbers 
that only have one and itself as factors. So prime numbers. Now prime numbers are very, very special. So special, I'm going to go and use a bright yellow font right now. So think of prime numbers. Well, think about one. Is one prime? It is not, because it only has one as a factor. Because one is itself, so it's actually not prime. That's kind of cool. Um, two would be prime. Three, uh, five, seven. Uh, what's the next one? I think it's going to be 11, 13, 17. So you get the idea. All these numbers only have two factors, one and itself. So for two, that's going to be one and two. For three, one and three, five, one and five. You get the idea. All right. Let's take all this kind of information and let's start looking at how we can go and solve some questions. So if I want to say, um, well, a couple things is if I'm going to ask you to do this, so I'm going to ask you the following. I'm going to ask you two questions. What are the factors? And let's see, what's a good number? Um, what are the factors of 42? So I'm going to ask you that. And again, you want to start kind of thinking about things in pairs. So 1, and you know that the pair of 1 is 42. Um, 2, the pair would be uh, 21. I think what else would be for 42? Uh, we know there's definitely 6 and 7. I'm going to put them right here, 6 and 7. Does 3 go into 42? I think it does. I think it does. Uh, we definitely know that 3 times 14. There we go. I think that's all the, the factors of 42. Okay. But if I asked you to do the following, prime factorize 42. Oof. Prime factorize. So, a couple things. We want to factorize, use these, and, and there's going to be two ways that we can do this. So there's two ways. The first way is using the classic factor tree. And that's not, that is not my preferred way. The my preferred way is what I like to call the sled. And yes, I call it the sled because, well, I'm from Canada, and this makes me think of snow and winter. So I like calling it a sled, and you'll see why in a moment. But before we even get there, we need to recall something. We need to recall um, exponents. And exponents, uh, things like this, 5 to the power of 3. So that little 3 here is the exponent, right? That's the exponent. And what this really means is that this is 5 times 5 times 5. Because when we go and we prime factorize something, we're going to be using exponents. So let's go and do it. Let's go and prime factorize 42, shall we? Okay, we shall. So let's do the, the, the first way, so 42. Now we're going to use branches. That's why it's called a factor tree. Um, you, you don't start with 1 because one's always going to end up there. So when we're talking about prime factorization, we're only going to, we want to break it down into multiplying just by prime numbers. So the first prime number is 2. 2 times what gives you um, uh, 42, that'd be uh, 21. And then we just keep going down. So is 2 already a prime number? It is, so you just carry it down. You literally carry it down like that. And now we try and break this down. So we break this down into 3 and to 7. Are those prime numbers? Absolutely. So our final answer, if we had a prime factorize, would be 2 times 3 times 7. Now let's say I had you go and actually go and prime factorize one that becomes kind of interesting. Let's just use one called uh, 40. So let's do 40. And again, you, you start at 2. When you say 2 times 20, 
Okay, you carry down that 2. Then you would say another 2 times 10. Okay, carry, carry, and then 2 times 5. Oops. <laughs> 2 and 5. Now, how do you write this final answer? Well, this final answer, look, look at how many 2's there are. There are 3. So we would say 2 to the power of 3 times 5. That would be prime factorizing. Cool? Get it? Okay, so that's using factor trees. Let's go and take a look at those two numbers, but this time we're going to use the sled method. Now the sled method takes a little while to uh, get used to, but it's pretty simple. First off, you draw a sled. You see the sled there? If you're like, what are you talking about? You know, if you had to go and draw a sled and you're, you're drawing this person, like, woo wee, and they're super happy, right? Yay! And they're going down a mountain, a snow, a snow-capped mountain. Whoa, they're really, they're flying down the mountain right now. They're like, like that. Okay, that's why it's called a sled. And of course, if you're in Canada, you're probably wearing a toque. Ooh, there we go. It's called a toque in Canada. T-O-Q-U-E. A toque. Okay, none of that has to do anything with math. So we're going to use the sled method. And how this how it works. You put a sled around the number. Then on the outside out here, you go and say what number, what prime number can go out there. So you say 2. Okay, 2 times what gave you 42. You're going to say 21. And you draw another sled. Like that. And you kind of keep doing this. What prime number? Does 2 work? No. So 3 does. And that becomes a 7. And you draw another sled. And then you're like, oh. That's it. Right? Because what goes into 7? Just, just 7. And then you're down to 1. Aren't you? And that's it. So what is the prime factorization? It's right here. 2 times 3 times 7. Like that. Um, and a little note here. You always, the only part where kids get wrong, you always start with the smallest number. Okay, that's, that's, that's about all. So let's take a look at 40, because 40 will become a little more exciting when we do 40. So let's go and do 40. And again, I love uh, doing the sled. This is what I highly recommend, the sled method. So we put a 2 here, and the 20 comes out there. And, um, you know, you can add sound effects when you're doing this. Another 2 there, right? Another 2, right? So that goes 10. And, and you get another 2. Whew! This is getting crazy. And then finally, you end up with your uh, 5, and you're down to 1, and you're all done. Once you get down to 1, you're all, you're all set. And then your, your prime factorization is there. So it's 2 to the power of 3 times 5. The sled method and factor trees. Really good stuff. So let's talk about finding the greatest common factor between two numbers. So we're talking about the GCF of two numbers. So for this, I'm going to highly recommend using a sled method. Shall we see how this will look? Now, a couple things is, again, we talked about prime numbers, but you know that numbers that are not prime, so the opposite, the opposite of prime this is a FYI, we should, well, PRM is composite numbers. So comp is a composite number. So we look at um, the greatest common factor of two composite numbers. And the numbers that we will go and uh, try this out is, let's say, mm, maybe how 60, 60 and 96. Let's do 60 and 96. So what you do is you you put the numbers beside each other, 60 and 96, and you draw your sled. I'm just going to keep the same color. I like to change colors, but just for time. And you start um, asking yourself now the exact same thing, but the number, the the prime number has to basically be going into 60 and 96. So we're going to say two, uh, and that goes into that twice and 30, and that's going to be I think 48. 48 like that. And then you draw your sled again. Is there a number that goes into 30 and 48? Well, 
there sure is, a 2. And now it's going to be 50 and 24. Now it's getting a little more tricky, so what number? It's not going to be a 2, but it's going to be a 3. And now it's going to leave you with 5 and 8. Now there is no other number besides 1. That could go into 5 and 8. And actually, you know what? I'm going to actually just erase this part right here. You can keep it, but I'm not going to. And this is going to become important in a while. So what's the greatest common factor? Well, we've gotten down to the, to the bottom. Now, you look at the left-hand side, and you say, oh, I have a 2, 2, and a 3. And what you end up doing is 2 times 2 times 3. And that's going to give you your GCF. Pretty cool. And that is going to be 12. So 12 is the greatest common factor. That means 12 can divide into 60 and 96. And there is no bigger number than 12 that can divide into uh, that those two numbers. So that is an interesting way to go and find the um, the greatest common factor using the sled method. Now you want to kick it up a notch, and I know, whoops, there we go. I know you guys want to do what? What if you wanted to find the GCF of of more than two numbers? Um, well, let's take a look at. Let's say I said the crazy question. Now this is probably going to be the the challenging kind of question. Uh, let's say thirty six. 24, 144, and 96. Okay, so we're going to add some different things in here. Let's go and change it to orange. There we go. Um, so what number can go into all of these? Always think about twos or threes. Always, 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 always. So two is going to be the number there. And this is going to really you know, test your, maybe your, you know, your, your number, your multi multiple tables, understanding those things. Two goes into 24 uh, two times. And then this one is going to be, gosh, I think it's going to be 72. And this one's going to be 48. And um, then you just do the same thing again. Is there a number that goes into all of these? Now, luckily, it's even. So when it's even, you know it's going to be 2. And we get a 9, 6. <coughs> What's that? 36 and uh, 24. And this one has a really nice number. Hopefully you guys can figure out that it's going to be 3. And uh, when you do that, you get 3, 2, 12, and 8. And that's it. That's where you stop. So you say, what's the GCF of those four numbers? Again, you multiply 2 times 2 times 3 to get that. And gosh, the GCF of this one is 12. Maybe every single <laughs> question for GCFs, the answer is 12. I don't know. Um, but that's kind of a, um, a really good way to go and solve uh, greatest common factors. Thanks for tuning in to another edition with Math with Mr. Douglas. Did you figure out why this guy is on the theme of the video today? Check it out. It's an old 1980s TV show. Google Greatest American Hero. It's a classic. Until next time, have a great day.